pituitary adenoma in this video we will discuss pituitary adenoma their functions their characters and their treatment pituitary adenoma is the most common brain tumor that accounts for 15 percent of the brain tumors and what are the sign symptoms they may cause hyperpituitarism hypopituitarism or they may cause compressive symptoms almost all pituitary tumors are monoclonal in origin basic fibroblast growth factor is abundant in pituitary and stimulate the pituitary cell mitogenesis the other factors involved in initiation and promotion of pituitary tumor that include loss of negative feedback inhibition and paracrine angiogenesis so what's a microadenoma and what's a macroadenoma a tumor less than 10 millimeter in diameter is microadenoma and more than 10 millimeter is macroadenoma hormone production doesn't depend on the size of the tumor a microadenoma may produce more hormone than a macroadenoma there is characteristic loss of heterogeneity in various chromophobes that occur in large macroadenoma these adenomas may be secretory or non-secretory functional or non-functional so how many of them are non-functional and how many functional one-third of adenoma are non-functioning they do not produce any hormone so there are symptoms that they produced are compressive symptoms when they press on optic chiasma produce bitemporal hemianopsia when they press on they produces hypopituitarism two-third of adenomas are functioning and they produce pituitary hormones so what type of hormone do they produce hormone productions depends upon the tumor cell type a somatotroph produces growth hormone a somatomammotroph tumor produces growth hormone and prolactin both a mammotroph produces prolactin and a plurihormonal tumor cell may produce both gh prolactin TSH and ACTH so what is the most common adenoma of the pituitary secretory adenoma most common in 70 to 80 percent of cases is a prolactin producing tumor in women it produces amenorrhea galactoria infertility syndrome and in men it produces hypogonadism and impotency why a prolactinoma causes infertility the hypothalamus produces gonadotrophin release hormone that act on the pituitary to produce FSH and LH to act on the ovary to cause ovulation. Prolactin is inhibitory to the pituitary hormones FSH and LH by inhibiting their production. So LH surge is required for ovulation and that ovulation occurs in the mid-cycle. The absence of LH surge occurs in the presence of excessive prolactin this is the LH surge the estrogen rising before and then progesterone is rising after ovulation but if there is no LH surge there is no ovulation so there is no pregnancy so what are the ectopic sites of pituitary hormone producing tumor ectopic GH producing tumor occurs in lung pancreas ovary or hemopoietic tissue GHRH or corticotrophin releasing hormone producing tumor may occur in chest or abdomen and may present with somatotroph in the pituitary or corticotroph hyperplasia and hypertrophy. So how the diagnosis is done? A mag MRI to image the pituitary adenoma, CT scan whole body to find an ectopic tumor. When pituitary adenoma is suspected or on MRI hormonal evaluation is done for prolactin IGF-1 thyroid function test 24-hour urinary free cortisol and dexamethasone suppression test so what's the treatment for prolactinomas the drug treatment for them is bromocriptine which is a dopamine 
agonist because dopamine is inhibitory to prolactin production and prolactin inhibitory hormone is dopamine produced from the hypothalamus bromocriptine shrinks the tumor size in 80 percent of the cases but when the drug is stopped tumor enlarges rapidly the other treatment is for the larger one is transesphenoidal resection and what's the advantage of radiation radiation is done for residual tumor but it may cause secondary malignancy in 2% of patients but in the absence and the disadvantage is that in the absence of radiation 75% cases it may reoccur due to hypothalamic damage disadvantage of the radiation is that that more than 50% of the patient develop pituitary hormone deficiency in 10 years so most patients require lifelong pituitary hormone